The Stuben Sanitarium. Treat chronic diseases. In 1980, the Steuben Sanitarium was established to treat chronic diseases like cancer, tuberculosis, alcoholism, and mental illness. Location, location, location. The Steuben Sanitarium was located in the suburbs of Hornellsville, but not far enough away to avoid the smoke and dust of the city. Furnishings. The August of 1894, a group of men, largely physicians, under the care of Dr. J. E. Walker as superintendent, purchased the property which was furnished by the Hornell Sanitarium CEO. Dr. Susan Gray, former superintendent of Hornell Schools, lived by the sanitarium. Uh, I mentioned that Dr. Edwards went all over Europe looking for the latest techniques. They had experience that regular doctors wouldn't have. And Mrs. Walker asked me when I first came in, she said, was the St. James Hospital built and operating at the time? Yes, it was, but the hospital didn't have doctors with the special expertise that the sanitarium did. So if you had an unusual kind of thing, you would go to the sanitarium, you wouldn't go to the hospital. So they weren't doing exactly the same thing. Plus, you could stay at the sanitarium as long as you pay for two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. Whereas in a hospital, they get you better and they get you out as fast as they can. It had an elevator in every form of bath, Turkish, Russian, and Roman. One of the things that they did is they picked this site on purpose. And they picked it on purpose to find a place where people who were sick could go and everything about it would promote good health. Now, sanitarium became to known uh, as a place where people who had mental illness would go, but that's not what this was. This was a place for people who had different kinds of health issues. And so these were some of the things they looked at. Where the sanitarium was located is 1,400 feet above sea level. Now, why would that be important if you were picking a place for people who were sick? Air. Air. Air quality. Exactly. So they said it had some of the purest air around. Um, the view of the valley. Now, why might a view of the valley be a good thing if you look at it? Relaxing. Uh, you look down and you see, but all that hustle and bustle isn't around you. So you can imagine if you had put the sanitarium in the middle of Hornell, right? Now back then when they built it in 1890, um, they didn't have cars, they just had horses and buggies. So there would have been horses and horse poops and all kinds of stuff like that around to deal with. So putting it up here on the hill and the pure air and the relaxation were two of the reasons. Um, one of the interesting things, um, one of the interesting things that I discovered that I didn't know, uh, Dr. Edwards, who was the man who was in charge and who helped to design and build the sanitarium, uh, looked for a place that didn't have a lot of disease. Does anybody know what tuberculosis is? What, you heard of it? Yeah. Wasn't it like a breathing thing? It's a disease of the lungs, and it's very contagious. And at the time, 20% of the world had tuberculosis, and it, and it kills you eventually if you don't get treatment, if you can't get treatment. There were zero cases of tuberculosis in the Hornellsville area, zero. And, which I thought was really interesting. Is it like all the hills? Um, probably a, a combination of all of the factors, as well as nobody moved here who had tuberculosis. Uh, not that they would have necessarily known or kicked anybody out, but it just was a circumstance. Um, uh, and the lowest mortality rate. Do you all know what a mortality rate is? It's a rate of the number of people who die for different reasons or for all reasons. And this area had the lowest mortality rate in the state, which meant the number of people per 1,000 was lower than it was for any other part of the state. So can you see now we're accumulating all of these reasons 
why this is where they would build the sanitarium. Prominent Hornellians. The Hornell Sanitarium was founded in 1892 by prominent Hornellians L. W. Rockwell, F. C. Prindle, Walter G. Rose, J. M. Finch, and George Holland. Historically speaking, Robert F. Oakes. The Steuben Sanitarium had 10 acres behind and had been a pleasant resort for invalid and convalescence in the summer and many opportunities for entertainment and exercise indoors during the winter. The Steuben Sanitarium had 10 acres behind and had been a pleasant resort for invalid and convalescence in the summer and many opportunities for entertainment and exercise indoors during the winter. Pure Air the pure air from outside is forced through a shaft by means of a huge fan, propelled by steam and heated on its way by radiating pipes. This allowed those inside to breathe fresh air as if they were outside. One of the interesting things I found, which they didn't know, does anybody know what asbestos is and what the effect of asbestos is on people? Asbestos is material that used to be added to pipes and to uh, linoleum and other things. And I don't know the reason why, um, but uh, it was used a lot in plumbing. And they had water pipes with asbestos in it that they bragged about, as well as all of the bricks on the outside of the building or on the inside were covered with asbestos because it's a, what's called a fire retardant if it's mixed in it won't catch fire and burn. So uh, they had asbestos and all of that. Guess what we found out over time about asbestos? It causes cancer. The company secured the services of Mr. W.M., a Roger whose reputation as a caterer was widely known. He managed the Erie Dining Hall in Horn Hornellsville as well as some of the best hotels of the Union Pacific System. Steuben Sanitarium, Hornellsville, New York Library Surgeon Gen General Office, September 13, 1899. It had an elevator in every form of bath, Turkish, Russian, and Roman. First Class Comforts. The sanitarium had the comforts of a first-class hotel at a reasonable rate. For examination and consolation, $5. If necessary to make chemical and microscopical analysis of the secretions, ten dollars. If the patient remains more than fortnight, no charge is made for examination. Furnishings. The building was spacious. It had a well-finished parlor, offices, a gymnasium, laboratory reception, reading, and operating rooms for the well-being of the guests. One of the things that they did at the sanitarium, they did something called antiseptic surgery. Does anybody know what the word antiseptic means? It's like almost, like for example, like rubbing alcohol and stuff like that. And what it does it? Like cleans it. And it kills all the germs. Mm -hmm. So they prided themselves on using all of the antiseptics to kill all the germs. All of their utensils, the knives they used to cut somebody open, all of the skin was prepared with the antiseptic. Uh, they didn't have latex gloves back then, so I'm not, they must have just put the alcohol on their hands, I'm thinking. Uh, but that was really something that not all hospitals did. So if you went here, it was something that was really important. It had an elevator in every form of bath, Turkish, Russian, and Roman. The company secured the services of Mr. W.M., a Roger whose reputation as a caterer was widely known. 
He managed the Erie Dining Hall in Hornellsville, as well as some of the best hotels of the Union Pacific System. Steuben Sanitarium, Hornellsville, New York Library Surgeon Gen General Office, September 13, 1899. For examination and consolation, $5.00. Am necessary to make chemical and microscopical analysis of the secretions is ten dollars. If the patient remains more than fortnight, full charge is made for examination. The facility boasted of having a personal team consisting of sixteen consultants, trained nurses, and attendants with doctors on duty at all times. Facility. Best doctors and surgeons. In August of 1894, a group of men, largely physicians, under the care of Dr. J. Dr. Rosewell Park. The most notable ph physician was Dr. Rosewell Park. He later moved to Buffalo. Rosewell Park cancer was named after. They had hydrotherapy, electric hydrotherapy. They had these machines that you would get into one and the only thing that you could see was your head and they push a button and this water and the water temperature would go up and up and up until you perspired and they had certain levels of perspiration that they thought would get the toxins out of your body. Personal team. The facility boasted of having a personal team consisting of 16 consultants, trained nurses, and attendants with doctors on duty of all times. First class comforts. The sanitarium had the comforts of a first-class hotel at a reasonable rate. Rates. For examination and consultation, $5. If necessary to make chemical and microscopical analysis of Henry Martin Roberts. On May 11, 1923, Henry Martin Roberts died in Hornell at the sanitarium. You may know him better as the author of Roberts Rules of Successful. These men made one of the most successful medical and surgical institutions in the country. The most complicated medical and surgical cases are given all the advantages known to science. Sanitarium Hospital and Home. In the 1909 Cornell Dictionary, when you are ill, go to the Steuben Sanitarium and get well. A sanitarium, a hospital, and a home without any of the unpleasant features of a hospital. Benefit to the community. The sanitarium was for many years a great benefit to Hornellsville and later Hornell. It attracted a large amount of patients, some of whom made Hornell their home. In prison, in the early 1920s, the sanitarium was viewed by the state officials as a probable location for a new state prison. They were built in Attica because there had been so many residents that complained. Closest. In 1932, the sanitarium's long life ended when it was sold to a Bible school. The school operated there for several years and until they moved. It is gone. It was empty for several years. It was sold in 1967 and demolished to make the BOCES campus.